On to football now, and we begin with a club whose eyes are fixed firmly on Wembley. Distan from the Juicen Premier League have been drawn at home against last season's beaten finalist Tiverton Town in the quarter-finals of the FA Vars. It's their reward for a 2-0 victory over Kings Lynn in the fifth round on Saturday. One of the biggest gates for years at Brewers Green Lane. 1,500 packed into the ground to see an eagerly awaited Norfolk derby, the prize a place in the last eight of the FA Vars. The game sprang to life after 71 minutes as Dis took the lead through Paul Warren. At that stage, Lynn was still in contention and they could have equalised soon afterwards. Disc goalkeeper Robert Woodcock to the rescue. But then came the first signs of the crowd trouble which was to spoil the occasion as a policeman's helmet was knocked off. The problem in one corner of the ground was quickly brought under control and attention turned once again to the match itself as Disc clinched victory with a goal worthy of the occasion from midfielder Paul Gibbs. There appeared to be little danger to Lynn as the ball fell to Gibbs, but he had other ideas with a memorable goal to make the final score, Dis 2, Kings Lynn 0. But the match will also be remembered for the crowd trouble which flared again moments later. In all, four people were arrested at the ground. They've now been charged with a fray and will appear in court later this month. Although Dis Town from the Juicen League are now just two games from a dream appearance at Wembley in the FA Vars. A 1-0 win over Tiverton on Saturday, so Aldershot or Atherton will stand in their way in the two-leg semi-final to be played on March the 19th and the 26th. Dis were rated distinct underdogs against highly fancied Tiverton, but the West Country side were in trouble as early as the third minute from a Robert Musgrave header. Tiverton were unbeaten since losing last season's Vars final and they looked classy on occasions although it was their man Ian Knott who was the busier of the two keepers denying Musgrave with an acrobatic save. However it was a terrible gaffe from Knott which put Dis within one tie of their first Wembley appearance. 69 minutes gone and the Tangerines on the threshold of a dream. Super sub Phil Bug fulfilling a pre-match prediction that he would hit the winner and spark unconfined scenes of joy among players and over 1,200 spectators. Dis might even have made it two in the closing stages. Home fans screaming for a penalty as Jason Fletcher was sent sprawling in the area. The referee was having none of it, but it didn't matter. Dis 1-0 winners, and who's to say manager Bill Punton and his players won't be singing all the way to Wembley. Well, with Ipswich away and Norwich not playing until Monday, perhaps one of the biggest games in the region tomorrow is at Brewers Green Lane. That's the home of Dis Town from the Juicen Eastern League. They're taking on Atherton, the Burnham Rovers from Greater Manchester in the first leg of their FA Vars semi-final. A trip to Wembley awaits the winners, and what a reward that would be for one of the best-known figures in Norfolk football. Bill Punton probably won't thank me for saying it, but the one thing he's remembered for above all else is that famous bald head of his. And more teasing, and Punton is past it for again. He does it as he likes. And that's a bit unfair given his obvious talent as a winger who created no end of goals for Norwich City back in the 50s and 60s. There he is, the man who made it with that superb long centre. Nowadays, that famous pate is more often than not protected beneath a flat cap, and Punton's calling the shots as manager of this time. That's when you come across from there. Don't stay there. Come across the field. We've got left. Okay. This is the third time Punton's come within sight of Wembley's famous twin towers. He was denied in the Vars semi-finals with Yarmouth in 1983 and knocked out in the quarters with this two years ago. So, could this be third time lucky? Well, I hope so. Anyway, I hope so. I think we can do it, we've got the players to do it, there's no need to think otherwise and if we just settle down quickly and get the crowd behind us, I think we can do it, there's going to be a very big crowd here and the boost is, it'll give us a great boost, you know, with our own supporters shouting us on. Dis were brushing up on tactics in training this week, they've done their homework on Atherton, a physical team boasting nine former professionals, but none of them has the experience or success of the man who'll be pulling the strings in midfield for the Tangerines tomorrow former Norwich City player Peter Mendham, a Milk Cup winner with the Canaries in 1985 before being forced to retire from the game. It means a lot to me, um, certainly uh, my greatest disappointment was actually finishing the professional game because of the injury and uh, obviously I've got fond memories of 1985 when we beat Sunderland in the Milk Cup final and uh, to have the opportunity to sort of play at Wembley again in the FA Vars final is a uh, this is really good and uh, obviously I've, I've got to thank Bill Punton for that. As indeed have a lot of people. Bill Punton's been a tremendous servant to the game at both professional and amateur level. No one would begrudge him the opportunity to lead a team out at Wembley. And this is my 25th year as a manager in this league and that would be the icing on the cake if I took him to Wembley. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be bothered if we lost at Wembley. 
just to get there and take the players there from here, I think it'd be tremendous. It'd be tremendous for Norfolk as well. And I think we can do it. Yes, the one! Yeah. We're expecting 3,000 there tomorrow. The very best of luck to this town. The town of Juson, Juson Eastern League are just 90 minutes away from Wembley. The Norfolk side beat Atherton Laburnum Rovers from the Greater Manchester area 3-1 in the first leg of their FA Vars semi-final. This was to be part one of the Tangerine Dream. Almost 2,000 supporters crammed into this town's Brewers Green Lane ground, hoping to see their local team take a step closer to Wembley. A few last words of encouragement from manager Bill Punton, the former Norwich City winger who'd been this far once before when he was in charge of Yarmouth Town. That time he'd lost in the semi-final. This time he was confident of going one better. Atherton had beaten former Football League club Aldershot in the last round and went into the tie as favourites. They were the more physical side but Dis were clearly the more skillful and it was some neat work by winger Kelly Bath which set up the opening goal. Bath's cross for defender Tommy Casey to score midway through the first half. From then on Dis took control and they increased their lead just before half time when Atherton goalkeeper Andy Hills made a hash of Stephen Miles' cross. Bath was there to make sure and it was 2-0. Dis hit the post moments after that and it was beginning to look a little rough for Atherton and their many travelling supporters at half time but the visitors were back in it early in the second half Dave Liptrot scoring from a corner to make matters worse Tom Casey suffered a broken nose after colliding with his goalkeeper Robert Woodcock and Casey will miss the return leg next week that forced Dis to reshuffle there were some anxious moments but the Tangerines restored their two goal advantage from a well worked free kick routine Kelly involved again, substitute Phil Mortimer with the goal, Dis 3, Atherton 1. That should be enough, Kevin, to be quite honest. And if we lose after going up there with two goals lead, then it's only, we've only got ourselves to blame. But I can't see us slipping up now. I think they'll come out and give us a hard game straight away to get the goals, but they've got to get three goals. And hopefully we can come through and uh, you know, get the result. I think we'll you know, play our football again and weather the storm. Is it too early for the uh, champagne? Yes, it's too early for the champagne. I've, uh, it's like golf, you can be six up with 70 playing and still lose. And I've seen that happen, it's happened to me. And anything can happen in football, as you know. That's 90 minutes away, but that's a long time in football, 90 minutes. I think Brian Clough said it only takes a second to score a goal, so that 90 minutes will be a long 90 minutes. <laughs> Footballers from non-league this town will be achieving every player's dream next month, playing in a cup final at Wembley. They won their FA Vars semi-final replay last night in dramatic fashion, beating Atherton 2-1. The players had to travel up to Rugby in Warwickshire, a neutral ground for the replay, after the first two legs had ended all square 3-3 on aggregate. Several hundred fans made the 270 mile round trip from Norfolk. Among them, forced into a spectator role, defender Tom Casey, who broke his nose in the first game. There was an early worry for Dis, but Dave Liptrot's effort brilliantly tipped over by goalkeeper Robert Woodcock. Then early in the second half, Dis fell behind for the first time over the three matches in the tie, direct from a free kick. No one able to block Mark Stewart's low drive, which just squeezed inside a post. Six minutes left and Dis remarkably scored twice inside a minute. Substitute Phil Bug with the cross and skipper Gary Smith headed the equaliser. Dis kept up the pressure and earned a free kick. And this time substitute Ian Manning dived in to make it 2-1. Now Dis will meet Taunton in the FA Vars final on May the 7th at Wembley. Manager Bill Punton suffered the heartbreak of losing in the semi-final back in 1983 when he was Yarmouth manager. Now his disc team and the fans are celebrating all the way. Oh, what a go! In, in stuff! We come through! Really proud of the boys! Don't get the win, SMB! Hey! We come, I can't say no one's just like that. We are going to Wembley! We are going to Wembley! We deserved it, I went to Manchester, we were robbed. The ball hit in there. Justice was done tonight. Brilliant. I'm over the moon, man. Terrific, terrific. That second goal, yeah, that second goal went in, that's terrific. Absolutely. Well, I knew we were in a great chance, really. Once the first one went in, we equalised. We're in a great chance now. I think we can win it now.
Princess upon the Hibbert! 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 Terrific, yeah, 1 0 down, you know, we didn't let our heads drop, we carried plug, carry on plugging away and uh, got our just rewards in the end. For Peter Mendham, with Norwich in the Milk Cup final in 1985, it's an unexpected return to Wembley. And while players and supporters toasted the disc success, striker Paul Warm was contemplating a double celebration at Wembley. It's also the North Walsham students' 21st birthday weekend. Get a minibus from North Walsham, they'll all go down, have a good night in London and have a good weekend, hopefully. But when just for one down, did you think your Wembley dream and your birthday celebrations at Wembley for 21st might be all over? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you still play to the very end, but I did honestly think it was all over. And then when one girl went in, I thought we had a chance, and then when the second one went in, that was just a dream. And the Tangerine Dream match-winning goalscorer, substitute Ian Manning, what were his instructions? Just go on and attack, did the business. Now, is the nose going to be fit for Wembley? No! Yes, <laughs> too right it will be, no problem. Even if it's not properly healed, you'll still play? Yeah, no, that'll be all right by then. That's supposed to be about three or four weeks. We really deserve to win tonight. Great team performance. Weren't you a bit worried when you were one goal down and only five or six no, minutes No, 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 we had faith in them, we had faith yes. in them. Brilliant yes, so team. Was. Should have had it on Saturday, really, but brilliant game. And who's going to Wembley then? Just out, just out, just out, just out, just out, just out, just out. And we'll be with Distown all the way to Wembley on May the 7th.